what's the one thing that makes you think of the 1970s or maybe even 80s? Defrosting your freezer. Ugh. Well, the time has come. Defrosting the freezer. What's your preferred method? First, we gotta take everything out of the freezer. Then you can tell me your preferred method. Did you know popcorn is supposed to pop better if you leave it in the freezer? We did not know that. Keeps it from drying out and it pops better. Gluten-free onion rings, we have not tried them yet. Salmon. Cauliflower crisp pizza. Why am I whispering? Wait, before you tell me your preferred method, We've got to shut the freezer off. Now you can tell me. I know. I've got the right method. Okay, all joking aside. Correct method is this. What? A towel? How are you gonna do that? And this, a hairdryer. <laughs> now, a lot of people will take and put plastic on the back side and then they will try to peel that plastic. It's a thin plastic, like a, one of those thin layered cutting boards that are just really flimsy. And all that ice will attach to that and it'll just bust right off. But we have a small freezer, so it really doesn't take that much time, but it's, it's really getting thick back there and uh, it's time to do that. Just try not to keep it in one place, just work it around and it'll just melt right onto your towel. Once it gets a little loose, you can take a little plastic scraper for like your glass top, cooktop, and you can get in behind it and you can kind of pop it out. Lay your towel down at the bottom. In no time you'll be done. Stick all your stuff back in the freezer, turn it on. One thing to keep in mind, the fuller you keep your freezer or refrigerator, the less harder it has to work. That food will help keep it cool. One little tip to keep in mind. Shall we begin? So I'll heat it up a little bit more and uh, should all come off. Well, there we are. It took a total of nine minutes to get it all defrosted. So, it's nice when you have a smaller one. <laughs> he thought it doesn't take as much. We didn't let ours get really thick. <laughs> it got to the point where it needed it. Uh, but you don't wanna let it go too far and too long. Um, it'll just cause you more work and it's not good on it. It makes, the, it, makes it run harder. Is any of this striking you as inappropriate? Now we just put our food back in there. We've got it all dried out and uh, turn it back on. Well, there we have it, everything's all back in order. So a standard RV refrigerator will operate on either propane or 110 volt, whereas your residential refrigerator will run on just 110 volt only. That can really come in handy when you are dry camping, so you're not using your inverter or draining your batteries. Um, so that's one advantage of the RV refrigerator, but either way, we have what we have. We have a smaller RV refrigerator. We could take out this section if we wanted to and put in a bigger either RV refrigerator or a uh, residential refrigerator. We have found so far this has been suffice for us even living full time since it's just the two of us. And we go to the store every week anyway, if <laughs> more than once usually. But uh, it's been working out just fine. It's been Plenty of, plenty of space as you can see. Like I said, it's been working out good for us. Okay, so the freezer is done, but stick around because now we want to share a recipe with you. If you like sweets, don't be discouraged about the keto because the secret ingredient is xylitol. And it tastes exactly like sugar with no negative side effects and it's actually really good for you. Let's get to the recipe. Okay. So here's the recipe. You can call it a 
keto candied pecans, or you can call it just a low carb pecan, or you can just call it just doggone good. It's candied pecans, and it's good. First. I thought it was just appropriate to wear for this. For the candy pecans, you need one egg white, one pound pecan, you need a half a cup of xylitol. You get that from Amazon. Three teaspoons of cinnamon. I like to use an organic Ceylon cinnamon. It's a lot better for you. Do your research. And then um, sea salt or Himalayan salt. I'm going to use the fine pink Himalayan salt. So first off, you take the egg white. You want to beat the egg white until it gets frothy, just enough to where it gets frothy. You don't like the Swedish chef? Okay, well this is Paula Dean then. How's that? Next we're going to put in our other ingredients. Okay, I'll stop. In some recipes I will take xylitol and I'll take a coffee grinder and grind it up into a fine powder, but with this recipe we do not need to do that. So we will leave that put and we will stick the cinnamon in with it and the salt. So we need three teaspoons of cinnamon and you take a half teaspoon your Himalayan salt. Take a little whisk if you have it works pretty good. Blend that together really well. You want it to get really blended really good so it gets all over those egg whites and those pecans. Mix that in Mix that up good. Now take one pound of your pecans. We get these from Costco. It's a two pound bag. So now I know, since I've measured out one pound before, that I've already got a pound in here so I don't have to measure that out. So you want to get those pecans coated really well. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to stick these in the oven at 325 for 20 minutes. And after that, you want to let them uh, cool for quite a while. Don't make the mistake I did the first time. I got a little antsy. And I waited. I thought they were cool enough. And I went to touch them and burnt my finger. That's the stickiness. It stays really hot. So be very careful. You let them cool for at least 30 minutes to an hour at the longest. You, know, you don't really need an hour. Then they will be hard. And you can just break them all up into separate pieces and store them away in an airtight container. Make an awesome snack. Xylitol is good for your teeth as well, if you didn't know that. He says you can't have sweets on a keto diet. In a convection oven, you want a shallow pan. The air needs to circulate. You don't want a pan that's too deep. You want to line your sheet with parchment paper. One thing about living in an RV, when you're at a park and your windows are open, and Others are really close to you. I hear everything you say. Like you're standing in the same room. Morka borka. That guy's crazy. Making weird noises. Or her granddaughter. She just thinks Papa's silly. Papa is silly. Sounds grandma. We will put these in the oven. And as soon as they're done, we'll see what these little morsels taste like. At least I will. I send you some. But. So, Borka! Borka, Borka, did the burn, 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 the the burn, already eaten a lot of them. <laughs> I really recommend putting them in the refrigerator because it just, I don't know, it makes them even a little bit more crispier and um, they're really good like that. So, Thanks again for joining us today and if you like this video please give us a thumbs up and subscribe down below and hit that little bell. We'd appreciate that as well. You can also follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Okay. Now one thing you do need to do with your xylitol is... Sorry. Wrong recipe. That's it for the refrigerator. Let me try that again. Freezer. Freezer. Thanks for joining us today.